Good day learners and welcome to module 1.5 of your grade 10 curriculum ICT in perspective and for term one this should be the last module covered. Okay so let's jump into it see what they are going to look at. We're going to look again at types of computers, what is ICT and then the ethical use of computers. So when we talk about the different types of computers we are talking about general purpose devices and dedicated devices. So a general purpose device simply means that it can do more than one thing, right? So on the left, we've got our desktop computer, we've got a screen, a keyboard, a mouse, we've got our system unit. Please, at this stage, we now learn that we do not call this a box anymore. We call it a system unit because it contains the components of our system, our CPU, our memory, our storage, our motherboard, all of those things. So this is our system unit. We've also got our laptops, tablets, notebooks, which allow us to work anywhere and at any time. It's not always a good thing, but <laughs> yeah, it's very convenient to do so. As we continue, we have our smartphones, which are multi-purpose computing devices that can also be used as a phone, right? Most of us are doing this. And then as we have heard previously about our servers, they are computers on a network that provide resources and services to connected computers and users. So in order to um, gain access of from the, the, the services provided by the server computer, you need to be part of this network. That's the only way you can actually benefit from that. So those are what we call our general purpose computers or general purpose computing devices. We also have dedicated devices. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because, and I don't like the fact that they always use the, the ATM, and I'll tell you why. An MP3 player, what does that do? It only plays music. A dedicated device is something that only does one thing, okay? So I would assume that when you are in a relationship, you are a dedicated device to that particular individual, dedicated to one person only. Right. Now, now you're with me. Okay. MP3 players. GPS devices. We used to have GPSs that only did the GPS thing. It only gave us maps. It only showed us how to go from point A to point B. That's all the GPS device did. Um, what about ABS braking on your car? It only deals with assisting the braking system of your car. Now, ATM machines, I'm going to go with household appliances first. Your microwave does just the microwaving, it just heats up. Your washing machine just does one thing. But what about your ATM machines? Like in the past, it was fine. But now we're finding that ATMs do a lot more than one thing. So if you um, are with an ATM machine where you can only, you know, withdraw and just check your balance and things like that, that will still qualify as a dedicated device. But the minute you can now check your bank statements, print them out, you can deposit money, you can do all these things at an ATM, is it now a dedicated device doing only one thing? No, it's not. Okay? So you just need to know the difference between your dedicated device and your general purpose with examples. Then what is ICT? Well, what does it stand for? The first part is information. This is where we talk about information that's been manipulated or, or, or processed data. Remember, we said right at the beginning that data is raw facts, unprocessed um, facts. Now when we process that data, it turns into information, and we can manipulate that as well. We've got communication. This is the process of transferring data, moving information from one place to another. And then technology, the system, hardware and software communication, the networks and communication devices, and the internet as well. So ICT, please know what it stands for, information communication technology, and be able to explain what that means or what that encompasses as well. Now, within ICT, we need to ask the questions, why do we need information? Folks, if you haven't already understood this from the world that we live in, information is power and creates the potential for wealth, right? If you know and you have a lot of information, you see, ah, for example, the markets are going to crash, you know, okay, if they crash, I can buy when the price is low and when they recover and the markets go up, I can sell when the price is high and make money out of that. Um, you use information 
when you, for example, are going to be buying a car or buying property or um, even simple things like going to buy clothes. If you know that there's going to be a sale somewhere, what do you do? You go and buy. If you know something's going to be cheap somewhere, you go and buy. I'm just, I'm just using simple examples, but uh, that's what it can do. And ICTs are both part and of and affect our everyday lives. Look at what load shedding has done. It shows you how much we depend on electricity and ICT devices. You go to the shop these days, most of what we do is not even with cash. So when the ATM systems go down, when the banking systems go down, it's a whole mess up for everyone. Okay, Even the traffic lights that we have to deal with every day, same story. These ICTs play a part in our everyday lives. We've also got our ICT systems. Again, do you see how we keep going back to the information processing cycle, right? Where our data is collected. So this represents an entire system. Our data is collected. Um, we work with the data. We store it permanently. We show the results. We send the results. And we have people involved as well, like users, clients, customers, etc. Now, when we talk about an ICT system, we're talking about a combination of hardware, software, data, processes and people. Why do we have all of this? What is the goal of having all of this? It is to collect, process, store, retrieve and communicate that data and information. We're not getting it for fun. There is a purpose behind it as well. So please be able to explain what an ICT system is. And then they give us a few examples. So we've got the computer system with hardware, software, the user, data and processes. We've got our cell phone system with cell phones, SIM cards, cell phone software, cell phone towers, and the people who use them. And then one of the um, systems that comes up all the way through to grade 12, your point of sale system or your POS system, we've got customers, staff, scanners, servers, cables, credit card machines, software, and processes. Okay. And then the last um, item in this is the ethical use of computers. And we're talking about a, let's say, for example, morally correct way of using computers. Um, but there are also ways in which you can use these devices unethically. For example, theft, spreading false information, creating malicious software like viruses. Now, while these do not seem too bad, but they still are, you cannot see or touch some of the things you are stealing. So someone steals your identity online. You think, oh, it's not that bad. Until somebody hacks your Facebook or one of your other social media um, profiles and goes and does weird things with it. Um, it doesn't really seem to hurt people, um, but it actually does. No one gets physically hurt. But these days, because most of what we do is online and digital, it can cause massive, massive damage. Okay, we've seen so many scams and things come through because people are using the ICT devices and systems that are in place to act unethically. And folks, that's it for this module where we've now looked at the difference between a multi-purpose device or multi-purpose computer as opposed to a dedicated device. We've seen what an ICT system is and who's involved and all the components involved in that. Um, and also looking at the ethical use of of computers. That is everything for this term. I think that is module 1.1 through to where we are now. It should be module 1.5.